And in yet another terrifying example of the border being completely out of control, a band of suspected smugglers are still on the loose in Texas after a high-speed car chase and firing gunshots at Texas officers. Texas DPS warning on Christmas Eve, quote, the suspect remains at large and all occupants are considered armed and dangerous. Jonathan Fahey is a former ICE director and former DHS deputy assistant secretary and joins us now. Jonathan, good morning to you. We wanted to ask you about this situation because it escalated in a real Really serious way and like Ashley just said now DPS is saying suspects are still on the loose and they're considered armed and dangerous what's your response yeah it, it really is amazing and, and your your title is great just this border disorder because we have no control whatsoever of our southern border and it doesn't seem like this administration is going to do anything about it and these are Texas DPS officials having to deal with stuff the federal government should be dealing with but it's so derelict in their duty and you know starting I guess tomorrow with title 42 going away there's really going to be no control whatsoever of the border and people are going to be in so much danger because of this administration unwilling to enforce the law Right, and, and when you think about this omnibus spending package, this $1.7 uh, spending package, uh, one of the things it has is aiding illegal migrants pilot programs. That's $20 million that could be going to places like securing our border. So why are we not using those funds to instead hire more bo Border Patrol or doing something to prevent things like the situation that I just read about from happening? Yeah, it, it is really interesting. You, you talk about the omnibus bill, and it's like it does show that when Congress wants to deal with an issue like Ukraine or something else, they can all come together and put money on the table and deal with it. But neither Congress or this administration has any interest whatsoever in dealing with the situation on the southern border or improving it. There really is just such a commitment to open borders, and it, and it is unwavering. And we are going to see mass chaos. We're going to see overdose deaths increase, human trafficking increase, and there is nothing going to be done to stop this. And it, it's really it, it's so beyond disappointing that the American people are really left out of this, you know, of the budget or anything else. No one cares about what affects the American people the most, because this certainly affects American people probably more than almost any other issue, and there's no concern and no efforts to address it. So the Biden administration requested Title 42 stay in place until the 27th, which is tomorrow. Uh, the Supreme Court has yet to rule on what they're going to do, which I think is the holdup. What, what kind of timeline do you think that we're working with as to when Title 42 will actually um, go away, and then what happens next? Yeah, I really don't know what, what as far as the timeline is, but you know what's an interesting irony about this? Last week, the White House press secretary was, was suggesting that the White House was sort of a bystander at the mercy of the court and had no, no, no opinion on this issue or actually implied that they wanted Title 42 to stay. And then later, I believe that day or the next day, they filed this brief saying, yeah. no, Title 42 should end and end on the 27th. But you know, I, I don't know what the Supreme Court will do, but I do know what will happen. Things will get even worse at the border. This administration will do nothing other than simply they view the role of the Border Patrol at this stage is simply to process migrants. Remember, they were in front of the Supreme Court like uh, earlier, I believe, in earlier in December, fighting to keep aggravated felon illegal aliens in the country. So this administration wants nothing other than a purely open border and Border Patrol simply to process migrants into the country. And they've made it very clear that once you're here, you're never getting kicked out and you'll be treated as well or better than American citizens. Right. And excuse me, we've heard from Biden administration officials say that they're, they are coming up with a plan once Title 42 ends, which we don't know exactly when it's going to happen. But they say they've got a plan. And then that new book came out uh, last week and they were talking about how the president is so mad and angry and cursing in the West Wing. So do you think they have a, actually a plan in place that they're just going to surprise us with here at the last minute? Or do you think this is just going to be the wild, wild west and continue to be horrible down there at the southern border? Yeah, it doesn't seem like there is any plan whatsoever. And again, I don't think they really care. I mean, they, they probably prefer bad things not to happen, but their highest priority is this open border and they will do nothing 
other than to, to encourage as much illegal immigration as possible. And you see all these bad things happening, and they're just, they're just hopeful that the, uh, the media will largely ignore it and the border will remain open and massive illegal immigration will continue. And that's all they want and all they care about. And any time they're given a choice between public safety and the open border, they always choose the open border. They, they never put the interests of the American people first. They never put their safety first, their health first, their education first. They always put the interests right. of illegal aliens in the Democratic Party first and foremost. And it really is disgraceful because they have a responsibility to protect the public, and they have been so derelict in this responsibility. Well, Jonathan, uh, the news certainly is continuing when it comes to these Twitter files as well. Part 9 was released on Christmas Eve, and it revealed how government agencies not just the FBI, multiple, are actually tied to the social media network. Journalist Matt Taibbi posted this tweet saying, the files show the FBI acting as a doorman to a vast program of social media surveillance and censorship, encompassing agencies across the federal government from the State Department to the Pentagon to the CIA. So what do you think the nature of these relationships were between these government agencies and Twitter? Yeah, that, that's really, you know, another thing, you know, sort of a part of the same issue is you see this administration or you see you know, see the government working to, you know, censor opposing views or what they call disinformation. And it, it really is ironic when, when you see what the government, what the information they put out is that they call correct information. When you, when you think of the border or think of other issues, they don't put out accurate information. So even if this was somehow a worthwhile goal, they certainly, you know, they certainly shouldn't be the ones in charge of it because they don't put out accurate information themselves. And some of the some of the things that they've censored, you know, have been it's been laughable in terms of people joking about uh, don't forget to vote on Wednesday and things like that. But it really does show how pervasive this is. And you wonder, this is just Twitter. So what else is going on? And and the other thing is, where's the media on this? The media seems so just, I guess, agreeable to this notion of censorship because they seem to think as long as it's the stuff they agree with, they're fine with it. But it really should disturb Americans that the uh, United States government is, is censoring information that they're allowed to hear. And, and, you know, to suggest that they're doing it for altruistic reasons, when we know, like we just talked about, that public safety, border issues, crime issues, they always put politics first. So to suggest that they put public safety first here ahead of politics, I think that's that's really hard to believe. You know, James Comer has said uh, that part of these investigations will be with Twitter. It'll be, it could, it could extend to Facebook, wherever it need to go with these social media platforms. But when they bring them in to investigate them and ask them questions, do you think that places, these organizations like the FBI and the CIA, do you think they're just so untouched that anything, that things are just not going to happen to them? Or do you think they're going to be held accountable for basically what has just been put out for us to see in plain sight? Yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't hear all of your question, but but I, you do, with the censorship issue with Twitter, it is what, you know, when you have these multiple agencies working together, what, what you know, what else could they be doing with their time that is in the greater interest of the American public? Is there really anything about this that is serving the American public? And that, that should be the, the, what the one of the questions. The second question is, is this legal? And is it a good thing that the government is involved in the information people get? And, and I think most people would agree that the answer is no. And, and to see how, again, how pervasive this is, it really should scare people because this is all, this is what we know about. And, you know, it's on these issues now, but it could be on other issues. And, they'll, you know, the, they call things misinformation or whatever. And you see the Democratic Party doing this. Anything they disagree with these days, they, they categorize it as misinformation and try to shut it down or try to bully people right. or try to intimidate them from expressing their views. And it really should scare most Americans because most Americans, Americans deserve to have their voices heard. And they also deserve to have the right to listen to Whatever they, whatever they want to listen to, not just what the government deems important for them to listen to. Jonathan Fahey, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.